Welcome to the Fat Cats Rugby Podcast, bringing you candid rugby conversations, great interviews and insights into Ugandan rugby, and a touch of rugby in Africa and the world over. Fat Cats Rugby Podcast is a product of Fat Cats Media Brand for all your audiovisual content needs and equipment hire. Hope you enjoy this episode. Yeah, an interesting return to um, our home, the land of Binyewa and Nile Special. Um, the fat cat slayer here at the Freddy and Winnie BNB. Of course, the wind had blown us yet again to other destinations to experience rugby um, away from our home, but we're finally back. Um, my name is Ruben Kihumuro. Welcome to the Fat Cats podcast yet again. Another opportunity for candid rugby conversations. And of course, with me is uh, Edwin Wawire, usual partner uh, in crime. Edwin, have you been? Have you been? You've been moving around Kisumu. Uh, and then you went to uh, Nairobi. I have some know. stamps in my passport. Mm. Mm. Finally, finally, some more stamps. Mm. You have to, have to, have to, have to make the book be stamped. Mm. It shouldn't be empty. What was the most, the, the, uh, the most distinct thing about the most distinct thing about Nairobi for you, or about different rugby cultures? I mean, we we did take the trip to Kenya, Kisumu mm. first, and then Nairobi. What was that most distinct experience for you? No, Vuvuzelas on the second day. It was weird. <laughs> I mean, uh, Kenyans are not used to that Kenyans noise. Kenyans were causing too much chaos. Yeah, we took over the RFUEA grounds, but uh, even without the Vovuzelas, we still did enough damage at uh, that ground. The ladies came out top, men finished third, and it was a good, it was a good tournament. My first time mm. going for Safari 7s. I hope it won't be the last and uh, cover many more. Come. Off the pitch, though. How about uh, the lifestyle of the pitch? Did you even pitch. have any fun? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had some <coughs> egos uh, in, <laughs> in the Kenyan nightclubs. It was nice, though. I don't know what happened on day, I think day two, Sunday. Mm. One reason or another, I just blacked out. I woke up in the morning and I, I missed out the plan. And I called you. I missed out of the plan. Yeah. Anyway, um, another interesting day. Um, back here at, uh, at the lair of the Fat Cats. And we do have a friend of the podcast here, here for the first time. If, you know, one thing we're trying to do as much as possible is how we select our guests. Mm. It's called guest scouting. Mm. When you have the guest and at what particular time. And uh, I think the, the team was unanimous on this one, that this could potentially be at least a right time to have this guest. Yeah. I'm going to fault him for one thing. I have done, I have tried to do some research on this man, but I think he, he has a part-time job like with, CIA mm. or something or <laughs> like SFC. You cannot find his information anywhere. But no all such I know, results on Google. Mm, he's called Claude, and uh, even on social media, it is Claude with a J somewhere. And interestingly, I've never known his second name. But I want to give him the opportunity to first tell us who Claude is because we all see Claude. Uh, we all know he's a Cobbs fan, at least that one we know. We see a very jolly person. Um, different kinds of happiness before and after the sun goes. Mm. But then, let us give him an opportunity to first uh, talk about himself. Mr. Cloud, welcome to the podcast. Uh, thank you, Ruben. Uh, thank you, Edwin, for inviting me. I think uh, this has been quite overdue. I thought maybe I would have been the first among the first people to come <laughs> to Fat Cuts, but uh. I'm not an interview person that much, so yeah. I guess maybe that's why it has been taken that it has taken quite some time. But you know, each time we'd meet around, I'll tell you, when, I'm, when are you inviting me? But also, I think partly because I work up country, so yeah. uh, you getting the schedule is a bit tricky. When I come on Saturday, it is rugby and the uh, Nigos, as the uh, oh, council are saying. So, eh? so <laughs> <laughs> usually it's evenings and you won't get the chance to do uh, the interview. But mm. my name is Claude. Okay. Full names, Jean Claude Rutaisire. Mm. And uh, I'm a fan of Cobbs, as Ed, uh, Ruben has said. Any chance were you named because of Jean-Claude Van Damme? No. My dad uh, was francophone. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so I think because the name is francophone. So mm. I think that's why I, I, I got the name. Yeah, um, I'm an ardent Cobbs fan. I've been for a long time. Maybe I'll tell you how I came to support it. Uh, I work with National Water. Mm. Corporation. I'm a manager of human resources. Okay. Uh, stationed in Ginger. Yeah. 
basically that's about me and I love pop, pops but I also love rugby uh, on a wider scale it's my favorite sport I mean so, your, your bio shows um, HR practitioner family pops and blues rugby is it a must to support teams that wear the, the blue jersey strangely but soccer is support Leeds United yes that's what I was actually going to talk about next. how Leeds did you United? get to Leeds this wow. is revealing your age Leeds United, mm. SCCA, I am married, I have two daughters. Mm. Leeds United, I think it was in high school, we had um, a, a, a tournament where different people would organize themselves and, and name themselves whatever you wanted. Yeah. And then you have a tournament, they would give you a goat to the winner. So there was uh, one of my friends, Obis, called... John Barrows, actually, I think drives rally now. Mm. So he's the one who brought up that name. We were in Form 5. And when I found out it was a team in the English Premier League, I think I just continued. And then the time they really rose, it really cemented. Yeah, the, the semi final of the Champions League. Mark Viduka, Harry Kuehl. Uh, they went to the semi final of the yeah, Champions yeah, League. Yeah, yes. yeah Leeds yes. United. Ah, ah man, Leeds was bloody. Power. They had Mark I Viduka, knew they were hard, but I Lucas did, I didn't know they were semi final of the Champions League. Uh, Even Leo Ferdinand. James Milner. Yeah. James Milner. Yeah, they were a hard James team. Milner. Actually, James Milner team. made his debut when he scored the, I think until recently, was the mm. youngest scorer mm. in the Premier League. Yeah. That's yeah. where he started from. Most of them, Jonathan Woodgate. Hey, Woodgate, what? Wow, yeah. man, Leeds was a solid team. Yeah. Back in the day, it was a solid yeah. team. So, yeah. Yeah. Then uh, locally, SCC, yellow. So it's not necessarily blue. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But I like blues as well, so mm. yeah, and probably, yeah, those are my. It's not been the best sporting year for you, um, you know, for the teams <laughs> you support, though. Yeah, but that is sport. Mm. Um, sometimes you are up there. Uh, yeah, generally, I have some in, some friends in in Cubs, um, and of course I won't reveal names, but I know some of them after some painful losses. They, I know one who an interesting story where one took sleeping pills and. By the time they reached home, they were in just ready to black out, <laughs> sleep, and they woke up the next day. How do you deal with disappointment in sport? Um, I think that's why it's hard maybe to predict. The only team that gives me sleepless nights is Gobs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That I've, maybe I'm worried I'm going to play tomorrow a big decider game. These other soccer on TV mm. and mm. New Zealand and no, no, those ones don't. I lose, I move on. But mm. Cobbs, yeah. So that's why you see sometimes it's a comp- coping mechanism. After it, it's about to be okay. Let's argue about this. Let's talk mm. about this. Drink a beer and yeah. I don't want to carry things between home, work, and and rugby. So I try as much as possible to. Yeah. And if I've won, I will celebrate. And if you've won. But the 80 minutes is where I'm really, really tense. So I try to... With time, I think you manage your coping with, with such... Uh, That's true. That is so true. Yeah. Edwin, what's your first experience with... Or one of the first experiences you remember uh, encountering uh, Claude? High school. I was in high school. Mm-hmm. These are the guys who would watch Cops games and you just look at them from far. Yeah. The cool guys of Cops. I think those days, um, considering even the picture... There was grass in the parking of legends and whatever. Then you could also look into, I think, that part which is now Philip Omondi Stadium. So you'd come watch Cops games because that was the, there was the plot. There was the entrance there. Yeah, there was uh, another yeah, there was gate, some gate. sort of gate there. Yeah, that was, the plot, that was the plot for uh, high school holidays. So you'd see him, uh, I think even Roba, Mama Cobbs, Audrey, who else? Trying Patrick Mauro. Those are the guys you'd see. Mm. And they're the guys who are making the most noise for Cobbs. Wara, so, 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 just there. Hey, hey, hey. Like, that's high school adolescence there. Mm. But we'd watch, we'd watch and see. So, I mean, it's, it's just amazing how time can fly. And now you're now having them in different platforms. And you can even interact with them. So, that's, that was my initial reaction or first interaction with. Uh, uh, see with these 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 people of Cobbs, mm. and as we always say on the podcast, we're all Cobbs fans at the beginning. So, yeah, that is yeah. actually so true. we that's how we believe. that's how we got to know all these uh, these guys who 
who now they 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 they, they coined the the term gatekeepers. Mm. Yeah, we now that's how we knew them from that time when we were still young, uh, just trying to get an understanding of rugby. So, yeah. Have you ever uh, played rugby before? In school, yes. Um, I first touched the rugby ball in form three. That was. 1995 mm. and uh, yes mm. to that. and the person that introduced me to that game is Gary Mabonga mm. he was in form 5 so he came to my school I think it was from Namiriango mm. then he came to St. Peter's College Tororo mm. or as people commonly know it Tororo College mm. yeah and there was no rugby though we had two rugby teachers in the school mm. and there was no rugby so what were they using the pitches for? They were not. We had so many pitches. Okay. So there was soccer, but those ones were more more abandoned. Mm. Yeah, grass had grown and there was a lot of weed in them. So he's mm. the one who first introduced me. Uh, there's one of my uh, my former schoolmates uh, who passed on some time. We were two who got the ball. The other one was a sprinter. Mm. So he, yeah, for him it was exciting for him. So Gary is the one who first... Uh, um, Introduced me. We played, but we didn't play with any school. It was just in school, basically. Mm. And uh, I think there's Emma O team, uh, former Pirates number two. Mm. Yeah, uh, those are the people who are with. So it was just basically in school, here and there. Then after, I think he, st- he was there for one year, and he went to progressive for his A level. Mm. Okay. So after, I also went there. Because mm. now he's the person who had introduced me. I knew they were playing, and I think the late. Um, Herbert mm. had also been there. So, and then I had some two OBs from my O level that had joined. So, they had a formidable, I think they won one in school street or something, mm. but they were very close. Mm. I don't remember very well. So, that's what pushed me to join them for a level. So, Gary Mabonga, yeah. In school, yes. After my A level, I started to work almost immediately. So, I never got the chance to. Yeah. Yeah. To come and maybe play with the uh, uh, clubs. Uh, worked a bit and then went to do my bachelor's, which was evening because I was working. So you had no time to train. By the time mm. I was done with that and UMI was almost about, what, 28. Mm. You can't catch up at that time. Yeah, so I just remained a fan throughout. Yeah. That's how far I, I, I did try mm. to play. There are two particular words um, that are usually thrown around in in rugby circles. One being snob, second one being gatekeep or gatekeeper. Mm. Do you think you're either of of those? Or do you think you've ever maybe, especially for gatekeeping, do you think you've ever gatekept the sport? I, I don't know. Maybe you can describe me. You people that see me, I can't <laughs> describe myself. Mm. Yeah, because if someone says you're a snob, uh, there, there's something you do maybe that you don't see. Mm. And yeah, I don't know whether I am any of that too. Mm. Yeah, I really can't say I am this, I am that, no. But you, who are people who see, like uh, you saw and said we used to, mm. to, to, to make the loudest noise. Yeah, make the loudest noise, yeah. yeah. Mm. You can decide that. Maybe yeah. we should have mm. a snob award of the year, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but for a snob, yeah. that one, I, I think I vehemently say I am not. Mm. Mm. I don't think I am one. I don't know. Who came up? Positive as Mitty who came up with that thing. Of I don't know. I think it's just coming one. around. Of course, Mitty <laughs> was one of the guys that used to talk about it a lot on uh, social media. Mm. But, hey man, it kept coming up a lot. I mean, I mean when their team is playing... Fifty percent of them are in uh, VIP, mm. sipping expensive alcohol, and instead of supporting their team. And okay, now you have seen me watch rugby. Mm. How many times have you seen me watch rugby in VIP? Even if it is national team, even when I have an invite from you, are you? Mm. If it's at Chadondo, I will see it. Uh, in the, what they call now the English corner. The English corner. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. I will not go upstairs. <laughs> Outing as are legends, <laughs> even if it's midday. Mm. I'll go and sit in the stands. Uh, there, there are particular positions I enjoy to watch the game from, mm. especially on the sidelines. Behind the goalposts is not my thing. At Legends, I don't know why people enjoy VIP is the always behind the goalposts is like no. is like it's it's like the cinema. Yeah. You have this view. Yeah. 
like this. You see everything. There you can't people, miss it. There are people that like it. The mm. time I was discussing with uh, Adrian with yeah. Kenya, and I think uh, Kenneth and Tawaruka, yeah. they were like, when you're behind the goalpost, yes. you see the attack. You see the properly attack. And see how the defense. Yeah. yeah. Now, for me, right from any sport, I like the sidelines because mm. I then see how they are matching up. Yes, you see the, the matchup. Yeah. You see the contests properly. properly. From the other side, you're seeing the vantage point of one team. One team, yes. Yeah, until someone stands up and then you also start to stand up and then everyone stands <laughs> up. Ah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, of course, stop, yeah. And I think, yeah, I, I, if I'm to drink alcohol, I am a Nile person or mm. any other normal beer. Mm. These are the expensive... Not because I don't like them, or mm. but yeah, but I like to keep myself at the level that I know whether it's up or down, it's medium there. Mm-hmm. So I'll talk to Ruben, I'll talk to Edwin, and we'll interact regardless of which club you're in. Mm. Yeah. So I talk to people. Snob? I don't know, but you can describe me. Mm. I think you're, you're accurate, and uh, who am I to judge? I mean, when someone says there's something, I'm not good that I'm mm. going to tell someone. But anyway. Um, it's December uh, 7, which means we are fully, fully entering into the festive season. Is the calendar that has been the schedule that has been going out uh, out by Miti. Mm. Uh, I don't know how how people are coping so far, but the first weekend people are already asking for water. That shows how old people talk are to growing. me directly. You don't <laughs> need to go around the corners. <laughs> but anyway, in all this, just know that um, the festive season is being ushered in fully by the Fred and Winnie B and B. And you are all welcome to have your stay. If you have people coming into the country, from up country, from abroad, and you're looking for that extra space with a serene environment and also for a standard um, service and guest experience, the Fred, the, the Fred and Winnie B&B is an ideal spot. Why is it an ideal spot? Ten self-contained private bedrooms, a fully equipped kitchen, power backup system, Wi-Fi, laundry services, uh, a chef to cater to every meal you need, a sumptuous buffet breakfast with a choice of selected tropical fruits and juice. Pick off and pick up and drop off, uh, and from pick up pick up and drop off to and from Entebbe International Airport, as well as local transportation for getting around can be arranged. And also for up country, all you have to do is call the number zero seven seven eight nine three three five five nine. Yeah, um, and of course, with the festive season, there are a lot of uh, offers that you can be able to dive in. Just tell them that a fat cat sent you. And please hurry before all bookings are full. Anyway, let's jump Just in. to add on that, mm. we have a very nice tea. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, Cloud was just... here very early. And uh, he got what we're talking about. We talk about the guest experience. Yeah. We gave him some tea. Anyway, it's a cold evening. Uh, he got some tea as he was waiting for everything to be said. But yeah. That is the kind of standard that uh, the Fred and Winnie B&B is all about. Anyway, getting into the crux of what we are talking about today. So, a couple of weeks back, we had um, current chairman of the Kampala Old Boys. I don't know if they are, why they are, if, are they called the Kampala Old Boys because they are the oldest team in, in, in Uganda. I don't, is that why they have the old in their name? But anyway, mm. the chairman was here a few weeks back. Talk to us about a couple of things. Did you have a chance to, to watch or listen to that episode? Uh, not in full. Mm. I don't see a clips. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but he was here. He did talk about a number of things from him being, uh, his time playing to him being chairman, some of the, the successes, some of the challenges that have been happening and so much. And today we have Mr. Cloud here as well. As someone aspiring to take on to the, or take on that mantle for the future and perhaps lead Cobbs to a better um, visual uh, standpoint, I should say, and also maybe to restore the club to where it normally was, or maybe even make it better. Now, my first question to you will be, why? Actually, it is a two a two point question. Why and why now? Um. Okay, for a club that you like, and I would like to appreciate uh, Dr. Stone. He has uh, guided the club for two years now mm. through some uncomfortable times, especially when you don't have finances. And he has done um, great. And as a player, of mm. course, you know, we all know he was a phenomenon. I think that number, even when mm. you go into who has been the number 
best number 12. Yeah. It's hard to challenge him to that number. Mm. So he has done uh, great. Even what he did at Impis was uh, great. Yeah. So why now? Uh, I think timing to be a leader doesn't have to. It's 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 a conviction I have, and I feel maybe I may not have some time later because mm. it's now in my mind that yeah. this is the time I need to lead the club. Uh, he has done many many good things, and of course sometimes. Uh, so it's a club and we are allowed to elect. Yes. So I come to compete. And it's like asking me why I support Cobbs and I don't support any other team. So I'm offering myself. Because I also know him as a human being. He has mm. very, very good strong points and strong uh, strengths. But um, as a human being, we all have weaknesses at some mm. point. Even me, myself, I do. So he has done what he can do. And I have things I think I can improve on from what he has done. So it's what I want to do. Uh, you can't really point out very uh, strong points that he has failed to do this, he has failed to do this. Mm. But as you've all seen, there are, you've all had there are some scribbles here and there in yeah. the club. Yeah. So those are the things we want to maybe do away with uh, when people kept calling us uh, for a fake chat. Get eh? yeah, and those are usually small management issues, yes. And I think being a person that has been in the profession of managing people for a while, yeah, I can be able to, to bridge that, that, that gap. He has done us good, he has gotten a sponsor, yeah. And I know now with finances, we should be able to, to improve, yeah. So they're just small, maybe managing people, and yeah. And I feel if we don't, uh, uh, arrest certain situations a bit early and then get to the point where you do it you 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 the gap widens yeah so that is why i want to and maybe help the club uh, move forward have you have you served in any other positions under the corps management before yeah i was a treasurer for two years mm. uh, 2012 to 2014 one one term. Um, I think this has gone off. No, I think it's fine. It's on. No, it's Just, still on. Uh, whatever. It's okay. Uh, I served as club treasurer mm. for for those two years. Uh, I was transferred to Masaka at that time, and uh, I am a person that likes to be hands on. Eh? Yeah. They not manage the club remotely. So it happened. My transfer happened towards the end of the term. Okay. Yeah. So after we had our AGM at Legends, and I was like, okay, it's okay. The people wanted me to continue for another time. I said, mm. no, I, I prefer when I am more hands on. I told them, no, let me step. I think that's when Sam Rubanga mm. Rubase came in as treasurer. And went to his house. Yeah. Okay. Um, there have been a number of, of course, fans that have that have uh, come out and they're like, you know what? Um, Dr. Stone has not done this, Dr. Stone has not done that. And of course, there's a lot of criticism. You do say that, of course, he has done his good and his bad. But I want to know from you, of course, I have this, this, this mantra that when you are trying to approach a beautiful woman, perhaps, and you have competition, you don't go and, and, and talk ill about the other person. But however, you talk, to you talk about yourself and what you're able to bring to the table. So what do you think that with you as chairman, and be able to do for corps. I know you've talked about wanting to improve those small, small things, but maybe yeah. what are the first points that you would want to address once elected in power? Um, the first, the first point, of course, in any club, the, the, the biggest or the most important stakeholders are the players. Yeah, so if I get into the chairmanship, yeah, it's about restoring confidence and and in confidence between the ex com the players and the fans that's why you see i think some fans are very out are out there very either disappointed or angry and maybe might be saying a few things here and there and and players but that's my point so my first key target is to restore confidence and cohesion among the whole team the fans the players and and the ex com so that there's good communication there's good 
um, teamwork. We can make decisions as a group. And usually once there is any division, whether there are three people on one side, it disorganizes. You can't make a decision, they will go and shout. You're even mm. afraid of making a decision. How do I tell Edwin today he has not played well? Mm. Then uh, Ruben will say, you don't like Edwin. So they will misunderstand everything you try to put. For sometimes you have to give people what they call tough love. Mm. I have to tell you the truth. Edwin mm. today? No, 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 no. Lied. no. You lied. He didn't bring the Amar piano he whistle today. He lied. lied. But once there is, there is that uh, trust and confidence, whatever you see, People take it positively. Mm. Yeah. But even if something is for you, you're communicating it positively or with good intentions. But because someone has something against you, they will misunderstand it. Or they will just change it and you know in this era of social media, he said this, he said that, and change the whole story. That the comes a major problem. Mm. They are, I think communication because you get very many stories in the bar. I think that is rugby's general problem. Mm. as a whole communication and so much has been happening but anyway i do get what you're saying yeah edwin that in that is something when yeah. you know like when you do a term and they say past 100 days mm. yes past 60 days yeah. or six months that is it but there are other things i want to do mm -hmm. yeah the other things you but you see do. you always say cops has been giving you sleepless nights as mm. a fan mm. what you lose weight now as a mm. as a chairman no losing weight is good for me but <laughs> you're losing too much weight. I know you've been on the, in a fitness journey, see, but um, one one thing I believe in is if I am honest mm. with you, I will not sleep spend a sleepless night. Mm. If I tell you a lie, I will spend the night thinking of how I am going to carry that same lie and give it to someone else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if I've told you the truth, mm. tomorrow if you wake me up at three a.m., mm. I will still tell you the same because it's the truth. Mm. So I can't spend a sleepless night if mm. the club doesn't have money. Yeah. I'll tell you we don't have. If the club has received this, I say, okay, we are going to receive this, we are going to save this, I will not give it to you. So once you try to be as open as possible and allow criticism. Mm. Yeah, criticism is good. Critiquing is good because I am not the custodian of, 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 of knowledge or skills, no? Mm. Someone comes and tells you, listen to them, be like, okay, let's try your idea. Maybe mm. mine has failed twice. Let's try Edwin's. It should be able to work. If it fails, then you agree and do what? And make one general decision. So it can't make me sensitive. I think one thing you've, you've mentioned is uh, being straight straight up and telling people what the actual truth is. And then you talked about, you hinted on something like, that if there's no money, you tell people there's no money. Yeah. Now, one of the things we realized from the current chairman's tenure is the fact that there was a point when I think the previous sevens were starting, and I don't know if it was because of funding and whatnot, but of course from the grapevine, as Edwin has said, mm. people were saying that players, actually I remember that first circuit at, at Kings Park, some players did not play, and there were citations about lack of funding, and um, chairman seemed to have communicated that how come they cannot give him that grace, and how do you think you will, you will get that grace? Because uh, players may not want to understand. I mean, they put their bodies on the line. They want money or they want cover for compensation for whatever they are doing. I think that the first circuit was Ginger. I was actually there. The, when I was treasurer. Oh, I think mm. it was the first circuit in Ginger. King's Park. Last where, year. Where they... they this are talking about me. last year. Yeah, last this year, year was Ginger. Yeah, I think he's, he's talking last year. Mm. Last year, 2022. Uh, when we did Wakiso Sevens, yeah. mm. then we it moved around, then we came back for a job. Wakiso Sevens, where you guys, you know, they didn't even where, the where they, they won Rojumba Sevens mm. last year, but you started off very slowly, mm. and then on Rojumba is when all the players appeared, yes. then yeah. they're like, what yes. happened? Yes. Yeah, uh, when I first took over, mm. in the, the time when I was treasurer, we also didn't have sponsorship. Yeah. We had no money on the account. Mm. I collected membership from uh, from the fans, and we ran with that. I told the players, when they were handing over to me, you saw there was no money. Mm. But there was a, in the pipeline, there was a sponsorship deal, yeah. DMARC at that time. Like, there is a sponsorship deal. We are going to play. We are going to take records. Once money comes in, you will get all your areas. Mm. You get? That's what I promised them. And I attended there's a time, I think, between 2009, about 2012, about mm. the time I was elected. 
I attended every Cubs game. Mm. Every Cubs game. Seven, seven, up country, every, I attended yeah. every game. So that time, as treasurer, to give them confidence, yeah. I would attend every game, wherever they are going, and re-echo the same thing. Well played. Mm. Well played. We shall do this. You get it? We played, I think we lost um, the title to Heathens, narrowly. Mm. And the next season, we won and beat it. Yeah. You get it? So they, they believed because I kept my word. And when the areas, uh, when the, the sponsorship came, they were areas. And we uh, calculated and we paid all of them. And they were all very happy. So that's why I said when, you, when, you have confi- when people have confidence in you mm. and they believe you, they will understand and they will play. When they don't, even if you come and convince them how, mm. they, will, they will say, no, 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 you are what? a lie. So it's about how you talk to them yeah. and stick with them. But you see, when there's no money, now I come, I watch a game and I disappear. Mm. When I start to dodge games, they'll be like, mm. Mm. what happens? Now what will happen when there is money? Yeah. Maybe then he will actually not appear. So that's one thing I know we can work on. Yeah. Okay, but looking at you also from your point of view and your schedule, yeah. I mean, you're a busy man. You've already told us you work with National Water. First of all, you don't even work in Kampala. How... Are you going to balance that because of course you're in senior management and then of course if you decide you want to get into senior management how do you balance two demanding roles in of course different facets but demanding equally i should say yeah i think in in management of of entities sports businesses it's how well you create a team Mm. that you have okay i watch i think almost every game every weekend i'm in kampala so Mm. if you have a good XCOM. A very good XCOM, maybe a vice president or chairperson that is very good technically. You have a secretary that is very good administratively. You have a treasurer that is good with money. Then you have people you can co opt the team manager with the secretary, someone to do your audits, mm. someone to do a director of rugby to run around, get skills. Then you have a team that is doing the marketing for you. Mm. Do you need to sit there every day, watch training? Mm. Maybe, maybe not. But you'll come up here. In. But you have teams that are taking statistics of the players that are out there looking for sponsorship deals for, for them, where, how, to, how well to bring in money. Then you have a team that is managing the funds. How many funds are you recruiting? How are they contributing to the club? You mm. So once you create a good team, everything moves smoothly. But the moment you want to come from Ginger to be able to sign the check, to be paid, pay players, mm. yet they have an emergency on a Tuesday, you tell them, wait for Saturday, then that's what gets dissent among us, what? Mm. Team. So once you have people, you have empowered them that if I'm not there, at least give me a phone call or a message. Let's agree. We have this whole online meetings and all that. Yeah. Mm. Let's agree, make a decision. Okay, go out. Edwin has gotten an injury. Mm. Take him to hospital. This can't wait for me. Because I might also be ill at one mm. point, even if I'm around. I mean, but create a team that can make a decision and trust them to make a decision that is going to help the club move forward. Have you put into consideration what your dream team will look like for uh, the, the point when you get into power, if you do get into power? Yeah, I right now I don't have a, a clearly this, um, a team that I've put a name. Mm. I have maybe uh, had um, ideas of departments or sections I would want to have yeah. to run it. And then, uh, of course, I asked individuals. Yes. See, this is a voluntary, uh, you want to serve a club you like. So it's not something that you're going to pay that I'll be like, let me appoint Edwin, who is my friend. Mm. You want to appoint Edwin if you're going to pay him and command him. Mm. So I asked people, those who are willing to work with me, show interest for which position you want, especially the ones that are electable. Mm. Then after that is then when the XCOM is co- constituted, then be like, ah, Edwin is a good counsel, mm. can help us legally. Mm. Ruben is good with digital marketing, blah, blah, mm. blah. He can then come and what? Help us with the marketing. So and then... In that X score, you select. I don't want to be the one to select alone because I mm. might select alone Edwin and Ruben comes as the secretary and they can't work together. Yeah. Yeah. So it's until the X score is constituted, then you mm. can agree on who you want to put uh, on, on those other ex official positions that are going to help run the club day to day. And there are very many young boys that are willing to learn. And that's how also you, you train people so that if tomorrow I'm not around, that person comes and says, oh, this is how we used to run the club. Maybe we can run it better this way. 
So that there's some form of continuity. Edwin, um, from your observation, of course, with uh, the time that uh, Dr. Stone got into power up to now, is there mm. anything you'd like to maybe put across or ask Cloud in regards to uh, corps management, the corps organization, and how things are? Yeah, I think for me, uh, majorly, it's about the divide. It's quite evident. Um, obviously, without naming names, uh, you can really see these. Uh, the discord in the camp, there's no connection. I think the only connection is on the players and whatever. Uh, so I think uh, that's why even coming into the finale of this season 15, I felt Cobbs needed to win that title. Because if they did, it would try to bring them back. And like, even if all the madness that has happened, at least we have even won a title. Mm. Let's work together and do this thing. So that's why for me, I said, it was not public, but I can say it now. As like, Cobbs starts to lose more if they don't win that title. Mm. Forget Pirates. Pirates can have five more years to win it. For them, they always keep on rearing to go. But Cobbs, it comes in a cycle. They come, they win, they go back into slumber mode. Indians comes and takes forever. <laughs> then after they come back. So me, my my major issue or concern with Cobbs is the discontent, and it spills over. I think players pick sides. Uh, fans have, have made it very clear. I think Dr. Stone was here and telling us that people even come and approach him in bars and they're like, you, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Like, even open confrontations. And I even was like, why don't why isn't there a considered approach? Like how he and so Chad don't does their things. There are internal issues there, but we hardly hear them. I think uh, you only hear through the grapevine. But these ones have even spilled over to social media, in, in public, and I think maybe that's why even the chairman just comes which is the game and moves because he knows like there is that mm. bad blood, to say the least. So how do you expect to manage it? I know, uh, I think you mentioned man-to-man uh, -man management, but it looks very deep. Yeah, it's hard to... It, it, at the beginning, it's hard. Mm. Yeah, it's hard. But you see, it's how you man up mm. and be like, Edwin, I know you didn't support me. Yes. But you love Cobbs. Mm. Yeah, you come and tell me how you want me to manage this. Yeah. Give him a chance. Yeah. And express how he wants. Uh, Ruben supported me. Mm. Yeah, Ruben, you also come. Let's join. You get? Yeah. It's not something that is clear cut, that it's going to be easy. I'll call Edwin and summon him and he'll accept. No, yeah. no, 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 no. And that's our worry. Anyway, that mm. if we don't either manage it, it's going to continue. Divide, 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 divide. And you see, sometimes that's how clubs get to get split. Even these yeah. football teams, the historicals got to split. But we want to manage it, uh, not to go very far. Mm. At least I try to speak to as many people as possible in uh, in in, in Cobbs. Uh, the, 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 the both, I wouldn't call it both sides. Yeah. Yeah. People are just discontented, not that uh, the discontent, the discon, the, the um, discourse or the mm. dissent. It's not because they don't like an individual. Mm. It's just because they don't like either something you've not done or something you've done mm. and and maybe not even talk. Like I said, some people, um, during the sevens, we did Harambe, all clubs do Harambe. Yes. Yeah, and there, some people just need a phone call. Be like, Edwin, thank you very much for supporting Cubs over this period of time. Mm. Can you? They don't they don't want these messages on on whatsapp group because yeah. i'm on the group saying no and then you'll say oh okay 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 thank you let me send and they send through so some people just need that one phone call can i talk to you about this can i talk to you about can we reconcile and uh, you get it but once um, i'm very big-headed or i feel i'm full of myself and i say no i cannot talk to edwin he's a young boy yeah. you get he's just joined cobs recently you get it mm. Um, there are statements you will make. Uh, Edwin maybe never played for Cobbs, mm. just a fan, things like that. Those things push me further away. Yeah. So, how well can you harness? And you see, when I approach you the first time, you may not, but I'll call you again. Yeah. Then I come. Okay. There's something that just grow naturally into and the effort you put into. Don't call me once, and because I am still agitated and yes. I've said no, and you think that's it. But I still come and support the team. Mm. I am there at the match days. I will pay membership, I will buy kit. That means I'm still supporting the club. That means there's still a chance for me to come 
your side. So it's not something that I can tell you I will do in one, but for my first 100 days or so, it's something I would want to do. How well can we come back together? Whether I have lost, whether I have won, mm. how well can we come here, sit, Edwin, Ruben, Samo, mm. let's discuss this. Let's stop this nonsense of dividing the club and them calling and confronting people in bars when they're having their beers. Yeah, so it's just how well you keep persistently talking to people. And, and don't shun away people for their little effort. Yeah. Because it only gives you 20k, you say, ah, these ones of 20k. Mm. No, 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 yeah. Can have a reconciliation committee headed by Ozo. Of <laughs> 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 um, guys to come together, I think. Yeah. Mm. Nelson Mandela style, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but anyway, um, Sabula Media, mm. Mm. Uh, certain things that were put up by the current chairman, and uh, he did kind of hint on the fact that he might be, he knows people that were behind um, sharing that information with uh, Sabula Media. Mm. What are your thoughts about, I mean, when you saw those statements about uh, about Dr. Stone and the things that was, he was trying to do, apparently, according to Sabula Media, do, uh, because I think the allegations or the grapevine, you know, in rugby, there's, 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 there's so much grapevine in rugby. Too much word being People cut. People are cutting word every day. It's a... It's, it's a the kick, economic the, activity. Yeah, they <laughs> kick balls and cut word. Mm. Um, so, Sabula Media. Yeah. Some people were saying that it was uh, Cobb's opposition funds that actually fueled that. Yeah, I was sent a text that uh, I think I, I know the people. Mm. They are based in Ginger. Mm-hmm. I was in shock. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, if you write, if you ever see me writing three paragraphs on social media, yeah. just be sure it is not me. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm not very good at writing very many things. Yes. And I will love emojis and yeah. Yeah. So when someone reached out, I was like, okay. Just, I think you've seen how long it has taken me to come to Patkan. Yeah. This podcast. Yeah, it mm. has taken me long. So I was in shock after I told the person, please go find better things to do. Mm. Just leave my name out of what? Oh, it, of, yeah. of those things I don't. Yeah. Of course, um, there's a lot of grapevine in, in, in rugby. You know that. Mm. But they come with, some of them are true. Mm. Some of them are. Um, a grapevine as is. Yes. You get yeah. It, but you everything on social media, take it with a pinch of salt. Like we, we all know. Yeah. I can't tell you that uh, it's so and so who did it or it's the opposition. No. You get? So the fact that um I think the people are known who wrote the article. And mm. I think uh, when Dr. Stone responded, I think there was a response from him in Sabala Media. Mm. You saw it. Meaning he reached out to those people yeah. that wrote. So he should know the people that wrote. Mm. Yeah. So he should, those people that he gave the article to or the interview to, should then be able to tell him, ah, it was Claude who, who gave us this information. Bought us a crater and then see, boom. Yeah, as media, so, your number one resource and your number one power mm. is the, the ability to keep anonymity. That's what gives you more information and more. So if you yeah. give out your sources, you don't get more, more information. Yeah. More, so yeah. Sabola Media, I, I don't know who it is. I don't know what they do. I don't. Mm. I, yeah. At least I want to keep it at that. But you see, they pick they pick information because I don't think there is a, it's an individual. Mm. It must be a group. Mm. Not like they will sit here. Yeah. They will pick some information from this podcast. Then they will sit in a bar, listen to someone talking about. Yeah. Like the way Edwin, you also have information about yeah. Hobbes. Because yeah. there are people you know who are your friends. They'll be like, ah, this one has jammed. So then mm. they put things together and, and write the article. So it can't be that they are necessarily these people know. Yeah. I think um, looking at um, close rivals and current uh, champions, Pirates, they've had a heck over here. Yeah? Uh, but their wins have not only been on pitch, they have also had wins off the pitch. They have been able to expand their brand visibility, their brand popularity, their fan base has really um, embraced a lot of the younger demographic of people and introducing a lot, a lot of new fans into the game. Um, how can you and your team um, approach that? I think it has, it has for, for the other two big teams, I should call them in Uganda, Cobbs and Heathens, there's been a bit of a a challenge for them to embrace a younger demographic of fans and make them part of their movement. How do you hope to address that? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not well versed with their structures, and mm. I'm very happy for them. Yeah, the pirates. They are very vocal. Mm. They are. They have recruited so well. Mm. I would say, 
Yeah, so I don't know how their structure is, but uh, like I said, how well, I, and I think they have separated a bit. I think they have some difference in their management. APA management is different from Pirates. Yes. Mm. Management yeah. from Rugby Chill. Mm. And I think even the fans have their own management. But they still then work as a what? As a unit. As a unit. Yeah. Mm. Now, that's what I also want to see happen. That uh, we have fans. And our fans are fans because they love Cobbs. What else have you done to, 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 um, to entice the younger demographics? How well can their voice be heard? As fans, okay? when they sit here and they're about 300 fans, they have paid their membership and they tell you, as ex co, this is what we want. We want Edwin to come and play for us. Mm. What do we need? You get once you tell them, and like, okay, can you engage them? Can you engage the player? What is like, what is your input? As ex co, we can talk, but sometimes, like, let's say, like Edwin, you played for Warriors and, mm. and Ruben, they are, they are fans that will come because they have people they know. Yeah, you get, and there are players who will come to play for a team because of certain fans. Mm. So how well can you do? So when you give them a chance to also be heard, we want to mobilize for this player to come. We want, and they also give you their decisions and what they want. We want this kind of jersey. Get, give them an opportunity to express themselves. But once you shut them out and mm. everything should be done, an XCOM is maybe about six people. Yeah, for a club that has a baby about a. 500 followers that's really not really good mm. you get so how well can you get they might even just have elected um, members that you can bring to adapt to your ex co as ex officials and be like okay what are their fans views like they will have a club captain on an ex co what yeah. are the players mm. views so that you engage them now those very fans become your foot soldiers and i think you see that's what pirates has done mm. on twitter they are there each time someone says, I'm looking for a club, you'll see them, even hidden. Mm. I think when uh, Desire was at uh, NBS, yeah, you'll NBS. see when someone yeah. from, eh, quickly, you would take a replica to yeah. them. Yeah. So it's something, we need people that like that, mm. not necessarily expo, but also the fans and the players. How are they fighting for your club? If the club is being shot down, they are the very people that are having your back. Expo yeah. should not be having Peter Wars. Yes. Over the new ghost things. Yeah. And, no, 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 no. Mm. It should be the fans. That should engage. Mm. Now, Exco should engage on more technical issues, more club position issues. Mm. But there are things that even as we enjoy when there's banter here and there, but mm. Exco should not be doing banter. Yeah. Yeah. So you want the fans. So if they believe in you and have confidence in you, they will do this for you. They will go out there and look for fans. They will be willing to sponsor the new students that are coming. Mm. You come, come, come. I don't you say you come. Mm. Hey, you come and join and see how well Bob's done. Then also, of course, when they do visibility, they have done a lot of visibility in Paris. And uh, Doctor Stone had, um, I think, a partnership with Fireworks. Yes. Yeah, that's also another thing. It's it's, it's something good he really did for yes. us. And have we utilized it? Mm. Yeah. So if we can also, from that step he has done, can we move forward and have better use of that through the fans and all that? And yeah. So me, it's how me, when it comes to fans, me. My advice or recommendation is that uh, they need to go back to the basics. They need to first assess where, how they used to do it in Amiriang, where it was like more of like default. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like default, where anyone who would come, they're like, me, I'm coming to watch cops. So me, I would think, uh, I know Magomi is now is the coach of Namiriang now. So cops has to find its way to sneak back in and uh, get those kids. Because I think high school kids are very impressionable. In the sense that if, imagine now for us in our time, Fredo used to come and coach. Mm. So like, hey, Fred is coming. Hey, you want to see the guy? You get scared. What then you go and see him on the pitch. You're like, hey, I saw Fred. What? So everyone keeps on saying they want to come. They want to come. Like mm. everyone's plot, us when we were growing up, our plot was go and watch cops on the weekend. Mm. When they had those IRB balls, Gilbert, green and, uh, is it blue and white? Or green and white, that kind of thing. So they need to also be that intended uh, approach to the schools. I think they need to first get back Namiyango because now even, I think even Mr. Bizman always complains, he's finds Namiyango boys now rolling pirates from <laughs> Manyawat. <laughs> eh? Eh? Yeah, 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 just free of charge there. So they need to, I think they need to get back that. And uh, now with things like uh, TikTok, these reels on Instagram, if you just keep on 
that continued engagement with all these particular fans in schools. Me, I think they need to first start back from schools because when the schools guys come out, when they come out, they influence their peers. They're like, come on, you go and watch Raga, mm. and you go and watch our guys. Mm. So that means even even Cobbs in its uh, recruitment has to factor in these players from high school. Uh, I know now it's a little bit tighter getting players. I mean, you have to be very exceptional to jump from high school to enter Cobbs immediately. Those days, not to say that the players are not exceptional, but the guys who jump out of high school to enter Cobbs direct were also hard guys. Mm. I mean, guys like Chimono, even Stone here was telling us the, like, Mudola didn't, I see Simon Wakabi didn't play in box. Mm. He just went from the from the club, from high school straight to Cobbs. He used to be picked from school. Yeah, he used to be picked from school to yeah. go and play Cobbs. Like, so that era of exceptional players, they're mm. still there, but they are few. So they will need to get as many into box and create that kind of camp of like we are cool kids who play rugby. They, I think that should be their desired approach because any kid now who is going to pick a club to support, even if they're in a rugby playing school, mm. they'll be like me, I want to play in Pirates because Pirates just looks cool. And most of the friends yeah. are now there. Now all the guys are there. They're like, we have babes in Pirates, we have Nigos. Yeah. So everyone is going to be like, ah, Cobbs, ah, Edens, ah. Fossils. They, Fossils. Entebbe, Entebbe is far. Is ginger, Ginger is also in the village. It's far. You yeah. see what I mean? Yeah. So for me, I think Cobbs is still primed in a position where it can get those things back. How how they do it is they need to pass that with Namiliango all over again. Yeah. They need to make it great again. If it means having the legends, Chimono goes back to school and does training sessions, trust me, those kids are very impressionable. They will just come back and they'll be like, ah, okay. And when they come back, and you know how they distribute these days in different universities, in Kozi, Cavendish, whatever, when you get that whole pool, they'll start. Moves even need to go back to Moves and get as many fans from there as possible. I think that's, that's the only way they can get back to those days where everyone basically would support Cobbs. Yeah, and, and like I had said, it's easier uh, if uh, if we work together. Yeah. But you see now, if, um, for example, uh, one of your podcasts, Caesar, yes. joined Cobbs, he has a very big influence on Smack. Ah, uh-huh, exactly, yes. yes. So, but such a person, if you don't recognize him, yes. you don't need to pay Caesar. Yes. No, it's just recognition. Yes. Caesar, thank you, thank mm. you, call him. He will run back and be like, okay, yeah. you can talk to these players. Can you talk to the sports master? We yeah. have a coach. So yeah. it's just how you continuously engage. Even if you've disagreed, you're like, yeah. now let's do this for the club. So mm. it's the same thing. And I think that's why in Amirango, because now you see uh, Onrad, Manyama, and mm. Magomo have a very big following in Amirango. Exactly. So once they go there, yes, you, you get. And now uh, um, Ambrose and Walakir have been there very long. Exactly. But you see, these are now, they are still playing. Yes, they still will attract more people. Yeah, they'll attract. I'll help you. To, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll help you get it. Eh? Yes, because they are more in the lead, more in the leadership of pirates. Yes, than maybe Ambrose and Walaka, much as yes. they are coaches. Yeah, but because they are in the same age group, they are more appealing. So it's one thing I, I, I want to do, mm. regardless whether you played in Tare or you're from Tare. Yeah, whether they played rugby or not, can you get us fans? Can you identify? Yeah, like Alex Atwinda from Bara, someone identified and maybe tracked him, mm. and he's shining here. And yeah. all the same thing. Mm. And we have people looking out for those exceptional players, and as well as fans. So maybe we'll have to go there. Yeah, um, interesting. So before we leave this particular topic, um, when when is Cobbs getting a home? I mean, the home is is a cornerstone of, I believe, why pirates efforts and development has been fueled and accelerated. When is that happening for, I think, the most prestigious club in, in this country? Uh, yeah, and how, what should I say? We have always wanted mm. to, and uh, I think at one point, uh, when Pirates was got for okay, yes, people were like, that place is far, yeah. and, uh, and all that. Eh? So I think our, our um, goal was to get somewhere very close. Yeah. And it becomes hard because the cost really goes high. So regardless of where you're going, just go get a place, develop it. Yeah. Development will find you there. Mm. Now, someone crosses from the other side of town, goes to this park, watches the game, spends the evening there, and then mm. goes back. So we ha- they have taught us a lesson that regardless of where you are, you can go and develop a place and make sure 
rugby comes there. Mm. Right now, I think it's one of the best pitches in the country, yeah. right, by standard. So we have, and I know, I can't preempt, yeah. I know even the current XCOM has been pushing for places. They have had options. And even before the previous XCOM had also had the engagements. So I, I don't know at what level they have reached that, but yeah. they, are, they are about three options or four in uh, from the, the other XCOM and even the current that is running. So yeah, if all goes well, whether it's me or them, it's about us pushing through. But they have, I think about maybe one is I think about 30%, the other is about 60% of we are about to get it. So it's just about that. The club is moving. Sometimes you don't want to say when you don't have all the authority yeah. and, 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 and the information to mention it. But there's a program and a project to have us a facility. And I'm sure once we have that, you can then easily match up Chadondo and, uh, and, and mm. Kings Park in terms of friends recruitment. Because the people have a home yeah. and they, ha- they own the place. They feel this is our place. So when you, when you see Pirates fans talking about Kings Park, you may think they actually have monetary gain or value. Yeah. They speak about it passionately. This is our home, home of rugby now, home of eh. Migos and all that. So mm. it brings a lot of ownership. And I think it's what we want to do as well. There are steps to have it done. Yeah, if I come in, maybe improve on, pick up from there. Yeah. If you can take it to 100%, good. If you can also move it to a certain level, so that the next expo that comes in also then maybe completes it. But it's one of the things uh, you can't put in the 100 first days of, yeah. of your term, but it's a long-term project. And come, put your footprint, and be like, okay, I got it at this level, put it at this level. Someone else may be completed, but your footprint is there in the move to have a place. Okay, interesting. Um, just looking at um, the state of rugby, um, from when you started watching rugby up to this point, um, what are those distinct things that you have identified, maybe both on the positive and negative side? Uh, what are those things that you have identified so far? Or what you can identify from back then and now? I think, you see, uh, globally, mm. rugby is not, say, very financially yeah. lucrative like, like yeah. other sports, mm. that's to be said. And same applies to Uganda. But I can tell in the last maybe 15 or so years, we have taken big strides mm. in terms of trying to improve, to commercialize rugby. Mm. And I think we still have many steps to go. So for me, that is it. It's, and when you've been in the game for long, eh, you, you see the transitions. You mm. get to appreciate where we have been and where we are and where we are going. Mm. And also when you engage with people, uh, the union, the previous ones, the previous ones will tell you how hard it was. Now like you, Ruben and, and, and Edwin, will, you played rugby, maybe you got some transport refund. Now the workers will tell you we never got anything. Yeah. We just walked. We jogged from a car mm. or from moves to go and train. Now here we have players who are getting something. Yeah. An effort is being done. The sevens guys are on a contract. Uh, the ladies, the sevens, got a yeah. contract of twelve contract, months. Contract so you yeah. see that we are really moving. Yeah, you get. We are really moving. Mm. And uh, it's, I think, at at the at the URIU level, it's properly commercialized. They tend to have more long term. Mm. Yeah, the clubs are aware. We have not yet. It's just a few clubs that are maybe fairly commercial. Which club can attract a sponsorship of 100 million right now? Mm. Maybe two or three. Yeah. The Pirates, Eden's Cops, the rest may not be able to attract such. Mm. So it's how well we can help those other clubs as well attract. Yeah, I was happy when the, the Rams was getting a kit, not this thing of playing in a different, different yeah. shirts. Yeah. Ginger hippos have, have multiple kits, they play in the sevens kit. Yeah. And then players get some welfare. Yeah. When you go to Chadon, I think they have medical insurance mm. of sorts. The, the, the national team guys are. So you see, we are making strides in the right place. And I feel we need to rally behind each mm. other. To get. You know, it's easy for me to sit here and be like, no, you people at uh, the ex core of Cobbs or at uh, URIU are not saying this. Yeah. But do you know the deals that are being done behind 
So when you interact with people and get proper, proper facts is when you appreciate. Um, negatives, of course, are, they're just hiccups here and there. Hiccups here and there. And they're small squibbles of me, I don't like this one, I won't play for this this team and, and all that. But otherwise, me as me, I see that the, the, the game is moving forward mm. and, and we are going to be at a better place in maybe the next 10 years from now. I am sure even maybe in the next three, four years, even the 15 players might get some minimal contracts of, hey, yeah. I will give you this for a period of, of, the, of say, one year, six months and what. But we are moving and, and I think the fact that we have also tried to move the game out of town, mm, yeah. especially the sevens, mm. people are getting attracted just because you don't have facilities there or people that can push it. But at least you can see it's, in the, um, it's there, people are talking about it. The Minister of Sports challenged us to fill up Nambole mm. after the Elgon Cup win over Kenya. Yeah. He said, yeah, it's going to get done. We challenge you to fill up that stadium. Mm -hmm. And we? <laughs> that will be an experience. Even, even on that point, before we actually leave that, I just want to ask one question. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a conversation going on in the grapevine that once Nambole is done, that there will no longer be any international games at any of these other grounds. Is that something that's true that all games are going to be at Nambole? Uh, of course, being a national sport, and yeah. uh, I'm not a national sport, a national team, mm. they would, do, of course, if it meets the standards, yeah, they would want it. How well they can say we are not going to have games, uh, I don't think it's possible mm. for them to close it off, mm. that it's only Nambole. I, I don't, I don't know how... I'm looking at it in a way that... Yes, Nambole might be amazing, especially from the aesthetics point of view, but looking at the, 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 the culture of rugby in Uganda, mm -hmm. where we have a pitch, we have a fun park, we have uh, all those interesting things like a bar, now you have Nambole, which is purely a stadium, mm -hmm. and of which they are saying there are certain restrictions on those grounds outside it. So does it not kill the culture of what brings or what attracts people to rugby in Uganda? Even just watching a, a rugby game, mm. me personally, I want to watch a game when the touchline is just there. Mm. Exactly. When you sit outside the tracks, yeah, you, you won't enjoy the game per se. Yeah. But of course, those are discussions you can have. Yeah. Be like, okay, you want us to have it here? Where can we set up our after party? Because they also mm. like the whole. When the speaker came, I was so amazed. The deputy speaker amazed yeah. that how people are so energetic. He's one of his PAs told me. Uh, he said it in Nyankore. Mm. Yeah, how do I translate it? Rugby is very nice. You can yeah. have after party here. Yeah. There is beer here. There mm. is meat here. And people are not leaving after that. Yeah. They said, yeah, we are here up to tomorrow. He said, no, 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 no. If I need to take the boss, maybe once in a while we need to keep coming and watch yeah. these games. It's interesting. So, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's our culture. So if they are telling us to be here, how can we set up? to have our culture because we're not going to come and watch a game and then after walk away mm, to go yeah. and have after party at King's Park because then people will get split. Mm. Chad on the pole go, Legends pole go, King's Park pole go, they two will die. Mm. So it's I think a discussion and they have to agree on how well to handle that. Yeah. Okay, as we start to close, let's talk a little bit about commercialization. I mean, you did go to um but it seems to be a general problem um, for sports, rugby in, globally, from the richest um, rugby union, which is the RFU in England, yeah. they're having clubs that are going bankrupt and closing. So how in Uganda can we have our clubs be more financially capable of managing themselves through a calendar year? even when they are not playing, that they have, um, they are able to meet their needs, pay their players and cover medical bills, which are some of the most important things. Mm. Mm. Um, you see, uh, people that support sport are usually looking for visibility. Yeah. In the sport, I am coming to give you my money, I want to be viewed. So if, uh, let's say when Betwe came, mm. What do they want? They want people to bet about cobs and rugby mm. and all that. So how well can we be? And sometimes it's we do things unconsciously. 
a disadvantage. For example, like right now, what's happening to us, when you have two camps, yeah. and then I, to, I think even at, uh, across in Chadondo, there are fans yeah. split. But then fortunately, it's not the ex co or the members, but yeah. maybe the fans. Because someone even mentioned it, I think, when they were in uh, Nairobi, someone posted on social media, it's not looking good, but that is it. Fans say we don't like these fans. That's yeah. it. But it's, sometimes it's not good. So how well can we work together and uh, engage? And also, how many people? You see, sponsors want numbers. I am Stanbic Bank. Yeah. I am supporting Pirates. Mm. I want, when I come to, to Kings Park, I see my branding everywhere. I yeah. see FlexPay is being used, mm. you get. And FlexiPay is trending on social media. Is that what we are doing? So it, it, those are things we need to look at if we are to attract. Do we have the numbers? If let's say now KCB has come to support Cobbs, yeah. what are we giving? What As Cobbs in turn, what have we done for them? Yeah. Yes. Basic principles, if we all agreed, we are saying, okay, I don't work in a bank. Maybe yeah. I should run and open an account in KCB. Yes. And they are giving me money, but they should also benefit for me as, as Put a some member. Deposits, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Put some deposits there. So they also benefit. Mm. Uh, if we are running a campaign as Cobbs, is KCB there? Is KCB doing a campaign? Mm -hmm. How will our people? Because if we let's say, for example, KCB posted an event and you have about 1,000 Cobbs fans, for example, mm. hashtagging KCB this, KCB, let's say KCB rally, which is in Kenya or in yeah. Kansas, so we are hashtag For them, they want to see numbers moving around. So when I come and give you, and then oh, you're just happy, it's as if it's one-way traffic. Yes. It, they, they tend to chicken out. I'm not going to give you my money, but at least as I speak, uh, um, there is there is keen interest in rugby you know, from people that I dis share with, like where we meet and discuss that people want to move into rugby right now mm -hmm. because right now it's trendy. Mm. The ladies have just won, the men won Victoria Cup here, yeah. the boys are all over playing uh, in Tunisia, they won. Mm. So all those things. So if we keep posting that, people are now asking, how can we, how can we come and be, or at least give us one tournament or give us this. So it's how well we add value to that, to the sponsors. So if, uh, let's say, Guinness has not, and UBL has not been in this for mm. a while, but Nile has been, even from Fatcast here, yeah. you can see, you're posting your pictures, it's Nile, it's Nile. Mm. Oh, so these guys are actually getting a lot of mileage. Yes. So then they want also to come. Yeah. Challenge. So it's how well we give them mileage. It's not something that is easy to, to do and maintain. Yeah. But if you have various options, that if this one jumps out because of budgetary constraints, there's someone else that is knocking on the door. So you also get afraid of leaving because the opportunity for him to come back would be what's hard but it's how we keep selling ourselves without necessarily fighting in in public and trashing ourselves if that cuts if you fight here you fight here mm. cut out that from the post you're going to put don't mm. portray it there so those are just the small small things yeah Make but at least also there's some yeah. transparency coming out commercialization is very uh -huh. hey, very very complicated. I think from the Ugandan perspective, I think where we have seen many clubs back in the day, the reliance was on one person. Mm -hmm. But now you have seen that many clubs now have, when you put their artwork out, you find like at least three or four partners. Yes. So they have sponsors and partners on board. Mm -hmm. So they put all their artwork down there, their logos and whatever. And you can see, I think Cobbs has gone awesome for NASA. Mills, Gibraltar, Fireworks, yeah. Fireworks mm. KCB. So all the clubs now have realized the value of having as many partners as possible. Mm. I think when I saw Chambo go, they put Kickoff Bar, they put X Effects. Like they have very, very many partners mm. who are helping them uh, achieve these things. And uh, I think now, majorly, it's from a perspective of popularity. Mm. How do you push the brand? Now clubs have seen it's not just about on the pitch. Mm -hmm. So it even comes down to activities of like activations, whatever. Can you appear in adverts? Yeah. I think you saw uh, pirates when they had their players with their CEO or some key people in the bank mm -hmm. appearing in, in flyers and whatever, mm -hmm. calling guys to come and support the team and whatever. So it, it has now become more of like even one of image rights and commercialization where clubs have to do that. How they manage to get sponsorship, I think. Testament enough is, is 
cop sex experience of that long wait of getting someone after some time eh? mm. that chasing back and forth there are this person then they flat with this one it goes to show that there is a lot that is done and i think maybe from a perspective of the union i know they do have those trainings but they will need to have more of them where they have as many commercialization training sessions mm-hmm. not even just from guys who are inside uh the union but even those who are outside you get season market marketers and tell them come and teach my tms or club chairmen or chairpersons how what sponsors are looking for mm, yes. so when 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 the clubs understand what sponsors are looking for you'll go and internally arrange the affairs for example the sponsor may want to come on is like but you have audited accounts and you're like ah uh, for us we just sit there and we approve mm. and like no 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 we want to be giving you money we want to see that you're accounting for it very well what have you been accounting for the money you have mm. because those are tough questions they'll ask behind the boardrooms i mean you wonder why people get particular amounts of money and then you're like you guys how can you get that little money and rugby also to, to entitled for a lot of money yet we're still growing the sport i think going forward um even those who are coming on board having seen the value of what the sport is all about can be able to negotiate bigger bigger terms or even terms that can grow into something big that's the most important thing for rugby right now they need if we can have the clubs from 1 to 10 or even 12 as they are saying having at least a partner someone who dishes in some money in addition to what the union gives the clubs i think we can grow would want our sport to go to the point where at least they can sustain themselves i think what edwin has said is is true eh? mm. you see, when you're attracting people it's not about rugby alone you might even attract a good sponsor without winning a trophy yeah and give an example trophy is on the list of their work yes. of course it's good but I'll give you an example from work. Mm. I think like Coca-Cola. Yeah. When they the Coca-Cola gave you a contract to do work for them. Mm. Let's say construction and what. You the contractor, your terms of employment with your staff staff have to abide by the Coca-Cola standards. Yeah. Whether it's safety, you have if you don't have your contract is done mm. okay. so if someone wants audited books comes and just for example says how organized you are yes. do you have you don't have millions they will, they will just yeah. walk away yeah they will look we'll give this person money they are failing to account for 20 million mm. 30 40 50 million so if you give them a deal of 300 million what's happening yes <laughs> they might carry money in a bag and come and spend in the bar so mm. it's how well we are organized and those are all points of marketing yourself as yeah. well, and branding and You sit there and someone is looking for you and be like ah I want fat cats to come and host my show mm. because if I give them money they will account for it to the dots. Mm. Yeah. So someone shares you see they share in the professional world eh? mm. people keep giving referrals. Ah, those guys they presented they are really good. Yeah. Mm. We didn't give them because of our budget. But you look at them. They are very good uh, good brands. So yeah. That's how it is. Okay. Um as we jump away from this segment and go to the last segment of what we are talking about today um one thing i want to ask is you have had an opportunity of working with um the local organizing committee for the Victoria Cup and uh, of course with the cup upcoming Uganda Rugby Union awards uh, you've been working with that as well um how has that experience been and how has that contributed to um maybe the understanding of the game that will maybe be a bonus to you when you become chairman of COBS. Yeah. Um you see uh working on the lock opens um technically you get to understand how to organize events that's the first thing what is required mm. standard wise and even to work with different people. Like now for example there are people I've never worked with closely uh, at that level but you also and get to understand how can i bring in money for this particular how do i manage manage the money that has has come in how do i make this um this this event stand out mm. uh same thing with the, the the awards dinner of course it's my first time i i i don't know what footprint i'll leave there but mm. it's how to, my my biggest selling point or the things that i like to see is how transparent is everything that is there so that if edwin comes and asks me the same answer i give edwin is the same answer i'll give robin 
Yeah. I don't have to have to juggle answers and, and all that. So when you get to work with people like the lock, you also understand some things. Yeah. When we're outside here, we are quick to castigate people mm. and throw stones. Ah, these people, ah, these people. You learn how to work with a limited budget in a limited space, but you have to pull off an event. You learn how to talk to people to come and sponsor. Mm. How do I convince Edwin that give me this mm. so that my event moves? You get so it's something that teaches you. Um, I don't know whether to call it um, how do I say it? How to negotiate with people? How to make sure that different egos are merged and work together? Mm. Yeah, so basically that is it. It's an eye opener, and then you are not quick to judge. At least uh, mm. some of these things I talk about are from that point. That's why when I say there are people that are willing to come and and support that the sport. They are yeah. actually knocking on the doors. They are like, mm. how well can we get this? But before that, I will sit and be like, uh, those you are you people are just seated and they are doing nothing. And but mm. when you're here, mm. you know how well how do you juggle this? Yet how do you appreciate? And also when they tell you, okay, now, Ruben, go and negotiate with Edwin. He wants to know, he's knocking on the door. Mm. Go and discuss with Edwin. So they throw you there and you're like, oh, okay. Edwin, so what are you giving us? No, no, that's not good enough. Oh, I want you to do this. Like, no, I can't do that. There's someone that is doing it already. So mm. It, mm. it helps open you, yeah, broader and, and appreciate life and how to make decisions, basically. Okay, and I think one last thing it will be about... We've seen photos and videos of you um, taking the time on the on the on the, on the national sevens uh, circuits to get money out of your own pockets to actually fund these teams' meals and maybe a few other things. What's the inspiration or the motivation behind that? And also maybe just a part B to that. Um, do you ever get a time or a chance to to speak to? some of these players and talk to them about um, finances, about growing themselves as better human beings, about families, about safety, um, yeah. Um, about the talking to the players I do. That's why you see I think I can interact easily with any and I never go to, I never blackmail players that you know if you don't come and play for Cobbs, you know, mm. they tell you come and play, you don't say I can't play. It's okay, but our, our conversation. There's one player that um, I think went to, went to play in Kenya and didn't finish. That didn't finish school, mm. so I sat him down. I told him, "You don't play for my team." Mm. We had never had a conversation with him. Mm. Told him, "You've never played for my team. You're not my friend. Mm. But what you've done is wrong." Uh, he was at UCU. Mm. I called him and told him, "I studied at UCU. Mm. I know they have." A semester when you're off season, mm. go play your rugby. You have one semester to finish. Mm. During the break, come and ask and study. When he finished on, when he saw the graduation list, he called me. Mm. No, he sent me a video. He was actually crying. I was like, I've called you to tell you I'm going to gra to graduate, but mm. I can't believe this. Uh, you're one person that didn't know me. Mm. but pulled me aside and talked to me. Mm. My people that I, were my people were actually castigating me and laughing at me. So he finished school. And he's my friend. He has bought me gifts mm. here left and right. When we meet, we talk. He looks at me like a big brother. Mm. So I do. And, and on most of the teams. When mm. I find you, you come. Ginger players, once in a while I talk to them. Pirates fans. I meet, When I sit there, I tell them, no, 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 mm. don't do this. So I try if someone is willing to listen. Mm. Yes. There are those who will be like, no, 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 me, I won't. Yes. But we, 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 we try to engage them where chance strikes and uh, someone is willing. And it's one of the things I would want. And I think that's what, I, that's what makes me love rugby, that even if the 80 minutes we disagree, mm. after the 80 minutes we can talk and talk and talk about different life things and, and if you need help here and there. Um, when... Uh, Haruna was going for surgery. Mm. I think I was auctioning Marvin's shirt. Mm. And Marvin is someone that I hold very dear to me. Mm. Uh, I'd just come back from a work trip. I went, I said, no, I have to get this shirt. Mm. Yeah, so some people asked me after, I said, no, 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 no. 
One, I wanted Marvin Shad. Mm. Two, Haruna is someone I've seen grow. Mm. And he needs support. And if he can get as much support mm. as is, yeah, so that is basically um, mm. something that, like when you leave a footprint and I come back and someone is like, okay, because I know tomorrow I might find Edwin and he's like, okay, I need some uh, legal advice and this. Mm. Because I've burnt the bridge, he will be like, no. Uh, the sponsoring of food, I was coming to Tororo, my hometown, for mm. the first time, so really. And I played the meanwhile two years ago. I told them, if Tarbi ever comes home to my hometown, mm. I, will, I will feed the, the teams. Mm. So when it when they announced the circuit, they all called me, even from you, and I said, You promised. You promised. I said, there's no problem. I promised. Mm. I'm not denying. So, yeah, it, it's a good gesture when people partake of your sweat. And uh, it also... See, we feel happy in different ways. People feel happy when they take beer. I feel happy when some people are happy. Mm. People feel happy when some people are suffering. So we are all different. So that was it. And even the other teams, we kept supporting here and there. Because people call you, we were looking for this, help this player. And uh, in Ginger, I think the two circuits, there were girls that were playing bare feet. Mm. Yeah, so someone told me, but Claude, this is your thing, you go. We actually managed to get boots for about 18 or 17 players about there. I remember I gave the money to Odugo because mm. he deals in, in boots. I told him, and the names of the players he was supposed to have. There were about 12, 13, 14 players about yeah. boots here. Yeah. So it's just a human side of someone. And I think giving back to the sport you love is just but the least you can do. Okay. Um, Edwin, I think let's jump into the questions now and the trivia. Just uh, on a lighter note to maybe get to know a little bit about uh, Cloud. Cloud, which sport would you have supported if it wasn't rugby? Being avid as you are for Cubs. Maybe basketball. Because mm. I think in school I actually played most of the games in school they were. Tennis, volleyball, basketball. Actually when I went from five. Mm. Because I was tall and big. When I came to play soccer, guys laughed at me and I played soccer. I went for Leeds United. Mm. Hey, I became a darling. I came from a single school to a mixed school. Yeah. I was a freestyler. Mm. Then I played soccer as a number two there, giving people sliding tackles. Oh yes. my God. Then went to the basketball. We did play with some guys that in my, from my former school, volleyball, same thing. And I'm a very good supporter. Eh? Mm. Let me give you a small story. Uh, my Form 5, I think about three weeks into the school, we had a match between Form 5 and Form 6. Mm. So the Form 6 are beating us and they are supporting. So the Form 5s are quiet. So I had taken a nap, I come out and mm. we started Form 5. Form, but we had good players. Yeah, We beat them, they came for me. Mm. Now the people who were the ringleaders of the Form 6 who had now come to mark this yeah. Form 5. All my hobbies from my what? the ones who played, yes. played rugby. Yes. Now they said, ah, now this is our hobby. Let's continue. So a, yeah. I also played volleyball and uh, some small time tennis. But I think basketball would have done it for me if it was to support. Because it has a lot of energy. Yeah? I love games with energy, moving vibe, and all that. Yeah. What's your fondest rugby memory on the pitch? On the pitch for me, mm. playing. I think the, I played uh, in form, form 5 or 6. We went to play in Bogema. Mm. That road was uh, Maram Road. I think, if I remember well, was it Mike? It was one of the players that was playing and you know, everyone feared to tackle him. I think I tackled him accidentally. Yeah? But <laughs> hey, some of these things happen by mistake. <laughs> accidentally, but I went back to school and I was feeling, if I remember yeah, well, yeah. yeah. But it was you know, one of those very hard players and everyone is fearing. That we lost, but still I think I remember I tackled him. And it was what about off the to... pitch? Hmm? What about off the pitch? Off the pitch, 2006, Elgon Cup, mm. Nairobi return leg. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was Malaysia until the end of the game. Mm. You know, they kicked through by I think Simon Wakawi to Alan, and then there was a tackle Alan, a try saving tackle Alan Musopeji. 
mm. eat. Oh my God, we, you've never seen that place get quiet. Mm. Yeah, we were traveled by Scandinavia. They actually gave us buses to travel to Nairobi. It was free transport and beer and everything people wanted. I will never forget mm. that again. That feeling was it was was there. Yeah, for me that is my and I was up close and personal with the action. Mm. Everything happened where you are. You know that feeling and yeah. you didn't want to jump onto the pitch? Yeah. So it was, it was a very, very close game. Very close game. The, do you see like what happened in uh, Kings Park recently? Yeah. It was something similar to that. Kenya trying and they were failing. They tried, they tried and tried and they were leading. Mm. Still with squad and everyone kept quiet. The whole town kept quiet. Wow. Then went to F2. That's it a bar. A, it was a, a bar. Still, I think it's still there. It was yeah. F2. Yeah, went F2. After party, it was bloody. We didn't sleep actually. We got out of F2 to the buses back to Kampala. Back to Kampala. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've had many of these as a cops fan, but what was your most painful moment? <laughs> as a cops fan? Yes. Most painful loss for me. Okay. It's a very hard one to talk about because <laughs> it comes with its issues. Mm. By the time Pirates beat us on Women's Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one, everyone has that. That one in their memory. That I will never forget. It had good good things in them. and Because yeah. I watched that game. You see where the ambulances park? Yes. I sat alone. That day. I didn't go to the Sunday side. I watched that game alone. Everyone, I think, was in shock. Uh. Yeah, and then we lost. I didn't even, I normally stand up, celebrate yeah. when you are, but I didn't. I sat. We scored, they scored, they won. I never. And then uh, something happened after. And it's one of the reasons I think I like Desire. Mm. My parents, so players were giving a guard of a clap. They were clapping out their fans. Mm. And then where I was seated was the Betway banner. Yeah, so they came. I think they wanted to take a photo. Mm. Uh, at the banner. Um, you think Desire was the youngest, one of the very youngest players. On mm. But he saw me seated there. You know, like the whole came, eh, you mm. know, like the way you're celebrating. It's not something personal, but celebrating and then. So uh, we go and take a photo there. Then mm. Desire looked me in the eyes. I think our eyes met. Mm. And he's like, he, he didn't say anything, but just held them and like, you get it? Don't, don't do it. Because eh? mm. I was there. It was. He has, I have so much respect for him for that. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was a young boy that, you know, would have been excited to jump around and be like, ah, okay, or come in front of me and jump and sing and take their photo. He didn't. Mm. And he has my respect up today for that. For that loss that day, yeah, it was, uh, it's one you cannot forget, yeah, as a Cubs fan. So, majorly respect, is that one of the key things you appreciate about rugby? The values, what yeah. value do you appreciate the most? Respect. Yeah. Yeah, respect. I think uh, regardless of the banter and the fights and uh, people that exceed, go beyond the banter, uh, people respect each other uh, in rugby. It's, 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 I think that's why you see, even when you say there's after party, people will stay there. Nothing personal. It's it's respect. It's my biggest value in life and uh, as well in rugby. When you respect someone, they will respect you. They will listen to you. They will. It's 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 a very key key value to hold in life generally. To respect people. What's your typical rugby day like? How does it start before you get into your jersey and uh, in the stands? My my Saturdays are rugby days. Yeah. Whether it's off season, whether it's on season, it has been programmed to, in me that it's rugby. Mm. My workmates, my family, my friends, even when they call me on a Saturday, even my dad, when yeah. he would call me on a Saturday, he said, "Oh, you were watching rugby." Mm. They, they know it's rugby. Even when the bombings happened, uh, at Chadondo, mm. it was a Sunday. It was soccer. My dad called you guys were because mm. for them they had Chadondo rugby, so they believe it was happening. Mm. Yeah, my day is normally wake up. I am not an early eater mm. breakfast, so it's normally, if, let's say, for example, the times we ha would have Legends games, uh, the junior teams playing at 10, um, at midday, then maybe two games. 
you'll be there at 11. The Time mm. Legends had very nice Katogo. I have Katogo watch the games. I like to watch. And also there's a time when there is Super Rugby. Mm. So you'll find yourself earlier than the normal weekends. Because maybe you then go watch the early games, the games in New Zealand and Australia. Mm. And then after, then either relocate to where the club the club is playing or if it's at Legends, you stay and watch them. Interact with a few people. So it's just a simple day as that. Uh, if it involves maybe a workout, yeah. maybe you work out in the morning. And otherwise, it's wake up, uh, freshen up. If there's a cup of tea or so, then move out and go and watch rugby. So my Saturdays are very tailored to rugby. Even if I have a wedding, mm. go to church. Just come watch a game, go mm, to the or something, something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Unless there, there mm-hmm. is this thing where they say in Cobbs at 60, they're going to have uh, old players versus new players and whatever. So if you are ever an old player of Cobbs, which position do you think you would have played? By virtue of my size, it's front row. Front row <laughs> I think the time we're playing Chadondo and, and Legends, yeah. Yeah, I would do front row, but... The knees don't allow. The knees don't allow. The knees don't allow. I told you to dance on a piano, you refuse. But I dance. You see, <laughs> even the time I work out, hey. they are, the knees are complicated things, even on the pitch. If it's not very level, yeah. and a small, yeah. You might not even move. They just a small shock. They get into shock. Mm. Mm, yeah. But of course, you can. But in school, surprisingly, I wasn't this big. Yeah. I was smaller. So we all were this big. My first things attempt. Happened. My first attempt. Playing rugby or actually playing yeah. rugby was in the back line. Even me is playing in the back line. Yeah, yeah, played in the back line. So here, of course, it will be front row. Front Worst row. Case, best, if I'm to move backwards, maybe in the lock. Okay. The engine. Yeah. Otherwise, these flanks, you, you can't, can't be number eight. You can, I will run, I sprint up to there, the Achilles is tight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you need these ones where you can just push, carry a few meters here and there. But when you have to sprint, the Achilles gets tight and you're mm. out of the game. Yeah. So I'd even pass sip my beer because I want to be hard. <laughs> if you weren't supporting Cubs, which team would you support? In rugby here? Yes. Mm. Now or be- now? Yeah. Today. Today. If Cubs is dissolved, yeah. you have no money. Which team would you support? Uh, huh? Which team would I support? Hey. Okay. Best thing, uh, because I am in Ginger right now, uh, I think I would support Ginger Hippos. Mm. Mm. Because of Ginger. Yeah, because I'm in Ginger. What if travel was not a problem? Would mm. Ginger still be? No, 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 I travel, but I think yeah. I would support Ginger. You support Ginger? Mm, yeah, I support Ginger Hippos. Okay. I would, yeah. Right. Okay. Their, their story is good. Uh. Mm, their story is good. And by the way, it's a small team, but they are a bit, they are kind of organized. Are they still mm. a small team? Mm. Uh, okay, maybe in terms of years, uh, not in terms of playing. They have been organized. Mm. When you look at their journey, they have been consistent. Consistency yeah. for me is very key. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, they have been consistent. They are there. When they come to, they have become big boys and they are consistent. In their own not, right, yeah. They not come big boys and then drop off. Drop. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, so they have come, they are there. They're here to stay. Mm. Anyway, just quickly jumping into the trivia. Mm, for you, Chigiri or Rolex? Rolex. Chigiri Rolex. is not my thing. Chigiri is not your thing. What's wrong with Chigiri? It shakes. Hey, for people that drink it shakes. liquor, it, it shakes. It shakes like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like fat. I don't eat fat, so Chigiri looks like fat. <laughs> Okay. Pum mm. pum shorts or a mini skirt. Pum pum shorts. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah. Okay. I love shorts. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you first of all before I even ask this question? Uh, of course we have to acknowledge that uh, you are a bald gentleman. Mm-hmm. So of course, he actually laughed at me recently, saying, I'm also, I'm also joining going. him that here. You need to allow. Man, from behind. You need to allow, Edwin. You know, I became bald at 19. <laughs> so in the rugby <laughs> circles... You reminded me of some of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> in the rugby circles, I might think the person who has had the bald head for the longest time. Yeah. And people have laughed at me, and they have yeah. all joined me. Yeah. My own brother. But I think 
you yourself are doing. Thing, <laughs> the saddest thing is being bald and you have no beard. Mm. Yeah. I got to them at the same time. When you're bald and you and you have a beard, mm. that's kawa. Yeah, I got to them at the same time. Yeah. You have reason to go to the salon, but mm. if you don't, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Mm. In which country do you think the most bald people in the world are? This is in Europe. Years. Hey, so, so do you a, think? That's a hint. I wish you had told me. Don't you guys have like a bad people association <laughs> <laughs> globally? Maybe we are. Maybe we are under the disabled. Yeah, yeah. That are maybe we are under the disabled <laughs> persons. Yeah. Which country? Which country drinks a lot of liquor? Just give me a hint. Uganda. No, no, no. In the European, you say. Let me give you another hint. Eastern Europe. Must be in one of those former Russian countries. Eh? Mm. And which is the most famous among those countries there? Take a wild guess. How many chances do I have to guess? Two. One, two. Yugoslavia? Yugoslavia no. is very big. It was broken down into so many countries. Countries, but... okay. So it must be one of those yes. countries. Okay. Czech Republic? It's okay, let me give Yeah? Czech Republic? Okay. <laughs> That's the correct answer. That's the correct answer. Yeah, yeah. You well, narrowed yeah. it down. They, they must have be an association. Is it part of it? <laughs> they must be yeah, yeah, it. must be the HR of the association. Yeah. <laughs> the Czech Republic is the country with the largest percentage of bad people in the world, according to a new list published by World Population Review based on data from the Vantage Hair Clinic. <laughs> hey, they have. These statistics. Yeah. People have statistics on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go to Turkey when the thing starts to manifest. Uh, for what? For yeah, Wayne Rooney. You have to do a kind of Wayne Rooney. It will disappear. It will disappear. I'm on Wayne Rooney. I stopped at the, the drug shop and they were telling me they can give me one. I told them, no, 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 I'm comfortable. Well, okay. Can you share? That's a picture of you when you still had your surgery. You want to recognize me? Hey. Yeah. Because ah, the, people I was, the people I was with in that photo don't recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's your, what's your favorite podcast, podcast episode? The one Bruno, when Bruno put on the Cobb's shirt. <laughs> <laughs> when he lost the bet to Caesar. But I got to laugh at Caesar equally. But hey. that's one of my, my favorite. My favorite. favorite. <laughs> wow. You always meet us wherever you meet us and tell us you're an avid watcher of the podcast. Yeah. What number? Oh, should I switch it up? What number? What, what, what's what what number of, the, of of episodes was it when the late Herbert Wafula appeared on the podcast podcast? Okay, before I even guess that, did you guys ever watch Herbert play? No, I think I did. Ah, yeah, I mentioned it. I think the first time I watched him play that was Cameroon. May I watch Cameroon? Yeah. As in, was, to, as in, he was what they called. Make us run. Uh, he was what they call a power runner. Mm. It was those guys you'd see because he had a, he was a, had an, an imposing figure. Mm. He was very athletic. He was he was muscular. Mm. So when he came, eh, you didn't want to be in his way. Mm. He's one of those Rujumba, Jonah Lomu style yeah. guys. Yes, and voice teacher would even step mm. properly. Yeah. So he was. Should have watched him play, would have enjoyed. Because mm. mm. I think first played in the back line. Then we don't have any footage. I was there, back. but I did yes. not understand, yes. so I didn't this watch. I'm eating. like Ruben. I was drinking soda. I was drinking soda. Where yes. did you yeah. go? And say so when is the game ended? He was, ah, he was, he was interesting. He was, yeah. he was a good player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you first? When was the first episode? The first episode was in July last year. 20... We just want the episode now. No, I'm, I'm trying to calculate. Mm. Yeah. Because I think I watched his episode. He was in a, in a, in a pirate's shirt. Mm -hmm. Australia. 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 Yes, Australia shirt. He was a very ardent fan of Australia. But um, you would argue with him. I would assume I th he was among the first people. True. Maybe, maybe third. Hey, man, Claude. Maybe third. The other thing about guessing maybe yeah, uh, about if i guess right just just give me the podcast what is that play just give me a <laughs> as my trophy i think but like, what i remember he was among the first people or something mm. must have been third was or, third actually. yeah plus it was this, that was the third episode yeah the first see, podcast that episode ever Popular, did yes the one the first yeah. of our old timers and legends um 
episode. Anyway, so you've talked about your best moments in rugby, but I just want to know 2020, what stood out for you? Beating Kenya at Kings Beating Park. Kenya at Kings, Kings Park. Park. Mm. You know, we are not beaten Kenya in Uganda. Our statistics against mm. them in that those games has not been good in Uganda mm. as compared yeah, well. to across. Yeah. So beating them was a very unsurprisingly when we won, I didn't even drink a beer. Mm. Everyone was in shock. I think the happiness shook me. Uh-huh. I sat, I took water and soda up, I think, 1 a.m. You're drinking soda up to 1 a.m. Yeah, soda and water. I went to the VIP <laughs> down when Maddox, what mm. was Maddox, yeah. Maddox came. Yeah, I, I didn't even, nothing. Everyone was in shock. People kept, DJ asked me, are you okay? I mm. said, yeah, I'm okay. No, there's happiness that can push you here. And there's one that comes and you're like, in this video. Then there's some of us who just and, cry. Yeah, and uh, how we want. This one keeps running away from people. <laughs> it just keeps crying. I don't understand. Yeah. Anyway, um, what keeps you going every day? Every day. Um, I think the fact that uh, you look forward to seeing more people, meeting new people. Each time I think of meeting someone, now like uh, I am, I get, should I, I can't call it anxiety. I get anxious eh? when I have thought of um, of now like they had this at at mm. first. Uh, all my programs had to be around this side, mm. so I went to to tar to my office in Intinda to print some things. I went to the garage somewhere here. Mm. I couldn't agree anything that is going to take me on the other side. So mm. if I have something that I'm going to do. It will mm. push me for that day or that week. So I, I, I plan for the day and the days are hard. So it keeps me going. I don't want to leave today, Cloud, you come and we go here, no. So for me, if Edwin has said we are going to have uh, tea mm. or dinner or what, my program is that. that day. Unless you call me early and tell me, Absolutely. I am not done. Yeah. So it keeps me going that way that I want, I'm anxious about what I have planned to see and I want to see it through. Mm. Okay, I don't want to be that I've promised you a, a, a beer and then tomorrow I, I, I can't give you the beer. I, I, it makes me feel bad. So I want usually to see through what I have, have planned to do. Yeah, and how would you like to be remembered? Not that we are advocating for you to pass on, but... Mm. In rugby circles in or in life? In life. Or in rugby circles. You can give us both. In rugby circles, of course, as someone who loved rugby, regardless mm. of which club you supported. Right? If you supported rugby, for me, you were my person. Mm. Yeah, I had no problem. Whether it's which team. It's time we drove. Let me give you a story. We drove with the uh, honorary secretary. Mm. And uh, and who? And um, so we had gone to bury the current interim chairman, Buffalo's chairman's dad mm. in Kitugum. We, we were supposed to come back. We said no. We have to stay and watch rugby in Guru. They had a festival, mm. rugby festival. Guys were in shock that we were there. Mm. We stopped, we booked rooms. We said, we didn't know any of the players. Mm. It was there, I think, Gulu High. So for me, where there's rugby, if I come to a place and there's rugby, you'll remember me for that. But for generally in life, I just like to be happy. Mm. Mm. You talk about this, I'm happy. You say the other, I don't have time with for fights and long-term mm. anger. If I feel you don't like me and you give me negative energy, I just try to avoid you. You get? And if someone shows, tries to either be it on me, there are people in rugby circles, I have no problem with them. Mm. I can tell you that if I said it, okay, that will be said off air. Mm. That I've never sat and had a beer with them, you'll be in shock. Mm. But you'll see me, I say hi, and pass, but I just want to be, I don't want things to pull me down. Negative energy, this one has done this, no? We move on with life. Tomorrow we get angry here. Mm-hmm. After 80 mm-hmm. minutes, it's done. Mm. Mm. If I find to drink a beer, we take a beer. If it's, we take, so me, it's about being happy, nothing else. Remember okay. me as someone who wanted happiness. Okay. Yeah. And, and wished people well, generally. Sure. Yeah. And after a very, very interesting conversation today, how, uh, what are your parting shots? Um, two. One is to appreciate fat cats. Mm. Yeah, this, I think this thing is started as, um, I don't know how it started, but I would feel it started as 
a discussion that these discussions we normally have after games eh? mm. then you try to analyze the game no me and edwin normally argue eh? i think which other game we argued um I think it was the tackle mm. it was one of those controversial mm, things. calls uh I think it was either the the sevens at Kings Park. There was a call mm. where we had you said we shall get video evidence and all that. Mm. I think it started like that. But it's it's um, when I see you people traversing the world. I think mm. in the next three circle of four years, I wouldn't be shocked when you guys are watching a rugby World Cup final and interviewing people on the sidelines. So for me, this is very good. You have made very big steps in one and a bit 18 or so months mm. and uh, I think you, you're trying to grow the sport you see I don't have to be on an expo I don't have to go and be a club uh, chairman but your contribution here is actually educating people opening people uh, people's eyes and people are getting to understand the, the sport more and I think I would like if this is Ruben's strength uh, media and blah blah what else can I do, for example, in my profession? If, mm. Let's say I was an engineer. Can we have an association or a group that can maybe go and help? Let's say if Kings Park is struggling with drainages mm. and maybe Chardon is struggling with, how can we help help them design in a more pro bono manner? Or oh, can I help sponsor and we have these talks? So me, I'm very, very happy. And I know <clears throat> if in the different categories we are in, we can keep improving this. Uh, rugby is is really in the right direction, and I know it will it will get there. So for me, that is it. Thank you very much for what you have done for rugby, and I know you guys are going to grow this, and you will not realize how far it will be. So you can start something small and it becomes a monster for you eh? if you don't keep planning mm -hmm. it very very well. Yeah. So but you're doing a good job, and I would want you to invite as many people as possible on both sides. Don't bring someone who's going to come and smooth talk and mm. yeah bring even that person who is a critic he comes a chaotic here, guy he, he brings his facts mm. if he has them not uh, then if he comes here and he can't prove his facts it is mm. up to him and those who can't defend their if i'm being accused i should come and defend myself so yeah. Yeah. it will create that transparency and all that but for me yeah that is it let's keep uh, pushing the spot and i know we are going to get there and also invite me next time on other discussions <laughs> otherwise thank you for having me here yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, that was it from claude of course for another episode of uh, the fat cats podcast he is standing for chairman of the kampala old boys the most prestigious rugby club in uganda the are you oldest. sure are you sure Ah, those are your things. <laughs> yeah. you, 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 you heathens people, like, like stressing your, your neighbors. But uh, uh, may I still believe they are, when it comes to pedigree, when it comes to tradition, mm. it's cool. Okay. Yeah, definitely. And of course, for those that are watching us, um, I'm clad in Fat Cuts match. You can be able to get your Fat Cuts merchandise customized to your need or even our pre designed outfits. So make sure you just get in touch with us, any of the Fat Cats, or just um, look out for the Fat Cats social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, um, YouTube. Uh, Twitter is X, by the way, these days. I can't mm -hmm. to get used to that. Yeah, but um, uh, keep looking out for the conversations. Keep looking out for so many of the things we're doing. We do have a couple of travel vlogs that are coming up. I hope you did enjoy the Kisumu rugby road trip series we have uh, one coming out for tunisia and we have one coming out for nairobi as well so look out for those as well and yet again another day completed with another amazing conversation thank you for being part of the podcast rugby podcast see you guys next time merry christmas uh enjoy your festivities ah, you're going into the holidays very we already we were going to have another episode we have a couple okay but not me not you. Me, I am wishing. They might you can, come back, I did, I did you say, can come back in the Santa I didn't outfit. Say, I didn't say from fat cats. Mm. I said from, from me yeah, to the rugby well, fatality. Yeah. Have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Be safe. Yes. Enjoy responsibly. And uh, remember to take care of yourself. Thank Drink you. special. Well, well not can. driving. Cheers.
Thanks for listening in. Share with us your thoughts from today's episode. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.